Well, since uh, you all responded so favorably to a bit of commentary from me last night, and I appreciate that. I appreciate all of you um, giving me the, the space to kind of find what I want to do with this channel. I definitely don't want to be just kind of this boring channel that just commentates on every single piece of news that comes out there. And I still want to be focused on, uh, you know, gaming and comics and, and, and how where culture intersects that. And I think this um, MSNBC stink piece, uh, I'm sorry, not MSNBC, just NBC News, sorry is uh, one of the most hilarious um, piece, pieces of propaganda I've ever seen. And, and the backfire was uh, predictable. And it's just another interesting take from uh, the mainstream media. I mean, this video will do more to basically solidify Donald Trump's 2020 president, presidential election than any Russia expose they ever uh, put out. Uh, it, it's a really weird take. It's like a college kids documentary project where it's like they say, uh, produce produce a documentary um, on some whatever you want, right? It doesn't have to be factually evident. It doesn't have to be true, uh, but make it intense and make it make it you know politically charged. Um, and they handed it in, and instead of like getting a C minus. Uh, on their project, they actually uploaded it to their official NBC News website. Um, I'm going to share with you uh, probably the most hilarious fact, uh, the most hilarious outcome of this a little bit later. But I wanted to go through a couple of, of topics. Now, first and foremost, yes, I know, Beats headphones are a hilarious meme. And I deserve all of the shaming you all give me in the comment section. I got sucked in. I admit this. But maybe when <laughs> for my 10,000 subscriber celebration, I will buy a less memeable pair of headphones. But gosh darn it, these things were expensive. And so I'll continue to use them at least for a little while. I accept your virtual lashings, though. They are well-deserved. We, so pause the video now. Make fun of me. I accept it all. You're all great people. And I appreciate you calling me out. Let's get into this baloney. There, there's actually a couple of topics here I just want to point out. I don't want to go through like the whole thing, but there are a couple of interesting uh, of memeable items. Before white supremacists, neo-Nazis, and white nationalists marched in Charlottesville, Virginia in August, they were organizing behind a computer screen. And a lot of that organizing happened through a messaging service called Discord. Okay, so you can see they have like the dramatic drum beat in the back. They have all the elements. It's just like this the project I, I meant to, I I wrote a note when I first decided I wanted to cover this video. Um, and then I forgot to uh, say it. It's like the project was to produce propaganda. It's it's not like the project was to produce journalism. The project was to produce propaganda. And here we uh, will hit. I'll hit you with the obligatory. Discord did nothing wrong, but this is just like the same. Um, this is the same logic, the same connections. Um, now, Discord did get uh, into a little hot water for having some alt right uh, people using its platform, and they ended up banning them. I don't agree with that, but again, it's their platform. They're welcome to do as they wish. Um, I'm not a supporter of the alt-right or the alt-left or any crazy extremes, okay? But uh, I would I would say if you're going to garner far-left ideologies, then you should probably allow far-right. But that's neither here nor there. What we're about to see is a fantastic leap of faith where NBC tries to paint a picture that because these people use Discord... They are somehow complicit. It's the same argument as if they were to say, because terrorists used Verizon to send text messages to each other, Verizon was facilitating terrorism. Which was originally created to connect video game players to one another. Wait for this. Just wait for this. This is just the latest in the long... Boom! <laughs> Did you see that sweet editing? Now you can see Discord is clearly 
facilitating both gamers and KKK members. Running shared history between the gaming community and the alt right. By the way, this level of like overproduction is hilarious for a three minute Being video. The has always been racist, it's always been sexist, but the internet has sort of allowed us to just sort of see what has always been there. Emma Vossen is a PhD candidate studying how sex. She's a PhD candidate in gender studies. I wonder what lens she's going to look at this through. And by the way, you couldn't find an actual PhD. You've got a college kid re speaking as your expert. Now I'm getting more convinced that this is simply a college project. Seated in gaming is replicated in the real world. Her study is based on Gamergate, a movement that began with intimidation. <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Gamergate, the username is hashtag Gamergate. I'm going to rape you with, <laughs> with a pole. <laughs> I don't think uh, the person that created this even knows how to use Twitter. And harassing female video game journalists under the guise of fairness in video game journalism. Already they let you know that they don't believe that Gamergate was a consumer advocacy movement. They, they say that it's, they already, you know, they just completely dismiss that as a possibility and say, no, no, no. This is about thousands of Nazis harassing women on the, the internet. Quickly gained traction. Nope. It helped Perfect timing. The alt -right movement, which secured power and prominence during the 2016 election cycle. When <laughs> oh, yeah. This is more of the left whining about their inability to meme. I'm sorry, leftists. I want you to meme too. I consider myself probably what you can call a classic, classical liberal. Us liberals need to meme better. I'm sorry, but the right is great at it. You were studying Gamergate and you were really looking at the techniques that they use. It's impossible not to see the same techniques being used by Trump supporters. <laughs> and it's Trump. Of course, we are barely a minute in and they have brought up Trump. Look, I'm sorry to inform you. I don't believe in a spaghetti monster in the sky, but I do believe in meme magic. Meme magic made Donald Trump was instrumental in Donald Trump winning the election. If the left wants a chance in the next election, if the Democrats want a chance, you better up your meme game. You better hire some meme experts and get good. According to Vossen, the gamers and the alt-right share common ground. As people... Okay. Oxygen? You're talking about a community that is tens of millions. You could have also said the statement, murderers and gamers have something in common because so many people who have committed the crime of murder also play video games. Who are marginalized are fighting for equality. Those who traditionally had privilege, you know, especially white men, feel that they are being oppressed by... Also, by the way, you couldn't have sent a tape recorder to this person. You couldn't have asked them to record on a personal recorder or with a microphone. You're literally playing what sounds like a voicemail. These people who are trying to just be treated as equal. Why do you hate black people? African Americans. They're dirty, they're stingy, and they're just gross. Xbox Live and PlayStation Network both allow players to chat live while gaming. They have become havens for hate speech against women and minorities. What I had noticed and witnessed <laughs> was what, what okay. I call it. Okay, just the last break. Like, just based on how somebody sounds, you know, they kind of lash. I love this spooky music. I mean, you've got to give it to whoever edited this. Whoever edited this. You did a great job. This is a great work of fiction. I can't take that away from you. Out in like very like a inappropriate way. Uh, permission. They allow girls to play Call of Duty in America. Wow, they allow morons to play Call of Duty. In oh, sick burn girl. Ooh, slay girl. 
not everyone in the gaming community is sexist or racist. We are having this sort of internal cultural problem with sexist. Oh, yeah. By the way, they just so happen to use footage from Friday the 13th where a girl dies. You could also kill all the guys in that game, too. But, you know, curious they selected that clip. By the way, with any video game, you can also not chat. You can also turn that off. Okay? I'm just saying it's it's like the same mentality that people use to to refer to as tweets as harassment. I'm sorry. If you can literally take the device that's oppressing you by their standards and put it down, it's not harassment. If you can block somebody with the push of a button, it's not harassment. Racist gamer. So what happens when these behaviors move from the gaming world to the real world? Keegan Hank studies the progression of the alt-right on the web. Discord uh, as a platform kind of had a meteoric rise in the alt-right. You know, I think many of them... <laughs> Okay, well... Members of, of the alt-right were actually aware of it because they were also members of the video game community. Many of them are. Discord became almost a requirement for a lot of these people if you wanted to be actively involved in the movement. Discord is anonymous and lightly monitored. So what, what this really is, is it went from connecting gamers to Nazis to then being essentially a hit piece on Discord. Okay? Discord is no different than any message board, okay? No different than any online chat. It has zero responsibility to police its members. It offers but a platform. You cannot hold Discord in any compliance or complicence with literally anything that's going on on its platform. I'm sorry. What we have here is individual responsibilities if bad things are happening on discord it's not discord's fault how can you it's it's like you don't write the same article about google when google uses you know you could use google to find hate speech on the internet i mean just think about what would show up in google if you google just hillary clinton meme would then Google be the vehicle that this hit piece would be about? I mean, all this said, we've had a, a bit of a, a bit of a laugh, but I am genuinely curious what the outlook or what the intent of this video even was. Um, was it to garner more support for Donald Trump? I think it does that. Was it to further diminish what little reputation the mainstream media, in this case, particularly NBC has, definitely does that. Was it to provide a, a bit of a goof, a laugh? Does that too. But it certainly does not prove any point. It doesn't connect gaming with KKK members like it tries to with its fancy little graphics. It just looks bad. And there is a saving grace though, okay? There is a saving grace. And I want to show that to you now because I think it, I definitely think it's relevant, okay? You uploaded this on your YouTube channel where you have over one half of a million subscribers, okay? It has but 27,000 views. I have videos on my little channel that has more that has more views than that. So even your own subscribers aren't interested in this. By the way, I mean, isn't Gamergate kind of a dead meme right now anyway? I mean, I know it's always there lurking, but I mean, what was the point of this? Uh, this is this like reeks of apocalypse type tactics where they're basically saying like they're trying to smear discord or gamers in general. Um, 144 upvotes. That's all this got. I don't even care. Obviously, this I knew the second I saw this video it was going to be dislike bombed. Take the, take the 8,000 plus dislikes out of the equation. Okay? Let's remove it. 144 upvotes on your own channel. I guarantee you this video will get more than 144 upvotes. Although, 
in before you all just dislike it to prove me wrong. But how can you be this disconnected from what people actually want? And the comments, I, before they disable them, I strongly recommend enjoying these comments. NBC News, you're garbage. <laughs>